Brought to you by wikivd.com Tony Fernandez Tan Sri Anthony Francis Tony Fernandez CBE is a Malaysian entrepreneur. He is the founder of June Air SDN. BHD, who introduced the first budget no frills airline Air Asia to Malaysians with the tagline Now Everyone Can Fly. Fernandez managed to turn Air Asia, a failing government linked commercial airline, into a highly successful budget airline public listed company. He has since founded the Tune Group of Companies. He was also instrumental in lobbying the then Malaysian Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad in mid-2003 to propose the idea of open skies agreements with neighboring Thailand, Indonesia and Singapore. As a result, these nations have granted landing rights to Air Asia and other discount carriers. As of February 2014 Forbes Asia valued Fernandez's net worth at $650 million ranking him at number 28 on the Forbes list of Malaysia's richest. Early life and education Fernandez was born in Kuala Lumpur on 30 April 1964 to an Indian father and a mother of mixed Indian and Asian Portuguese descent who had been raised in Malacca, Malaysia. At a young age he would follow his mother who sold Tupperware at Tupperware parties. He was educated at the Alice Smith School in Kuala Lumpur, starting at age 12 from 1976 to 1983. He studied at Epsom College Boarding School in England. He matriculated to the London School of Economics and graduated with a degree in accounting. Career He worked very briefly with Virgin Atlantic as an auditor subsequently becoming the financial controller for Richard Branson's Virgin Records in London. From 1987 to 1989, Fernandez was admitted as associate member of the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants in 1991 and became fellow member in 1996. He is currently a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. Fernandez was formerly a Warner Music executive in Malaysia. He was the Southeast Asian Regional Vice President for Warner Music Group from 1992 to 2001, when Time Warner Inc. announced its merger with America Online Inc. Fernandez left to pursue his dream of starting a budget no-frills airline. In September 2001, Fernandez purchased AirAsia and became its chief executive. AirAsia It was through Datuk Pahaman A. Rajab, the former Secretary General of the Malaysian Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry that Fernandez came to meet with then Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad in October 2001. Instead of starting from scratch Mahathir advised Fernandez to buy an existing airline, AirAsia, the heavily indebted subsidiary of the Malaysian government-owned conglomerate DRB Hecom, was losing money. Fernandez mortgaged his home and used his personal savings to acquire the company comprising two Boeing 737-300 jet aircraft and debts of $11 million for one ringgit and transformed it into an industry player. One year after his takeover, AirAsia had broken even and cleared all its debts. Its initial public offering in November 2004 was oversubscribed by 130%. Fernandez says his timing was in fact perfect. After the 11th of September 2001, aircraft leasing costs fell 40%. Also, airline layoffs meant experienced staff were readily available. He believed Malaysian travelers would embrace a cut-rate air service that would save them time and money especially in a tight economy. Fernandez estimates about 50% of the travelers on Asia's budget airlines are first-time flyers. Before the advent of AirAsia, he estimated that only 6% of Malaysians had ever travelled by air. 
Fernanda's biggest achievement was to open up countries within the region to new budget carriers, which previously did not have open skies agreements. As a result of Fernanda's lobbying in mid-2003, Dr. Mahathir brought up the idea with leaders from neighboring countries. Those nations subsequently granted landing rights to Air Asia and other discount carriers. In Thailand and Indonesia, Air Asia holds a minority stake in the respective local companies. Thai Air Asia are a joint venture with Shin Corporation, Thailand's largest telecommunication conglomerate, took to the skies in February 2004 and has to date carried over 1 million passengers in its first year of operations. PT Aware, relaunched as a low fare airline on 8 December 2004 and subsequently renamed Indonesia Air Asia, presently serves five domestic destinations in Indonesia. Other ventures In 2007, Fernandez started a hotel chain, Tune Hotels, based on the no frills concept. It has properties in Britain, Australia and the Far East. In March 2012, he served on the International Advisory Board of Global March to Jerusalem which aims to mobilize the international community in solidarity with Palestinians and to protect Jerusalem. A joint statement was issued signed by the various members of the board including Fernandez. In 2013 he hosted The Apprentice Asia the Asian spin-off of the reality game show The Apprentice in which a group of aspiring young businessmen and women compete for the chance to work with Fernandez. Caterham Group Fernandez is the founder of the Caterham F1 Formula One team, which began racing in as Lotus Racing and raced in as Team Lotus. On 2 July 2014, Caterham F1 was sold to a Swiss and Middle Eastern consortium. On 16 December 2009, Fernandez accepted a challenge from Richard Branson, a fellow airline boss, and the owner of Lotus's fellow F1 newcomers Virgin Racing. The losing team's boss would work on the winner's airline for a day dressed as a stewardess. Fernandez joked, the sexier the better. Our passengers will be delighted to be served by a knight of the realm but knowing Richard the real challenge will be to prevent him from asking our guests coffee tea or me, that would be scary. In addition, the team produced a poster depicting Branson in an AirAsia uniform. However, the date of the flight was delayed several times, first because of Branson breaking his leg then because of the royal wedding finally because of a fire at the Necker Island. On 19 December 2012, Fernandez announced that Branson would honor his bet in May 2013. Branson ultimately honored the bet on 13 May 2013. Caterham Racing also created by Fernandez competes in the GP2 series on 27 April 2011. Fernandez announced that his company had purchased Caterham Cars. Football Fernandez is a fan of English club West Ham United, and was involved in talks regarding a potential takeover of the club back in May 2011, at which stage it looked as if he was going to acquire a 51% stake in the club. Former West Ham chairman Andrew Bernhardt even flew to Kuala Lumpur to try and finalize the deal. But the two parties failed to agree on the price. It was just one month later, when Fernandez made another offer to buy 51% of the club although co-owners David Sullivan and David Gold rejected his bid. Sullivan told the London Evening Standard he wanted 51% of the club for two bob. Sullivan's comments started a war of words on Twitter. It was a good offer with good money and brought in good people, said Fernandez. Gold, and Sullivan can say whatever they want. I have been a lifelong fan, and would have brought good money, good ideas, new people and a new belief. As for PR stunts, wow, they are always in the press making huge claims. 
Were we not supposed to be in Europe? Now we have been relegated. Two sacked managers. All good players will be sold. No new training ground which is the most important ingredient I feel. Look at how many injuries we have. And more investment into the academy. On the 18th of August 2011, just three months after Queen's Park Rangers promotion back to the Premier League following a 15-year absence, Fernandez was unveiled as their majority shareholder having bought Bernie Ecclestone's 66% stake. He was also named as chairman of QPR Holdings Limited, while Neil Warnock remained as the club's manager for their return to the top flight. A run of eight Premier League games without a win eventually led to his sacking. Mark Hughes was quickly named as his replacement, signing a two-and-a-half-year deal in the process. Despite their new manager, QPR's poor run of form continued which left them fighting for Premier League survival on the final day of the 2011-2012 season. Relegation rivals Bolton Wanderers needed a win to have any chance of survival, but could only muster a draw with Stoke City meaning QPR were safe despite losing 3-2 to Manchester City after Sergio Agoras' injury time winner a goal which stole the Premier League title from arch-rivals Manchester United on goal difference. Mark Hughes led the club into the 2012-2013 season but after just four points from 12 games and without a single win one of the worst starts in Premier League history Fernandez gave Hughes his marching orders. Fernandez hired former Tottenham Hotspur manager Harry Redknapp on 24 November 2012, but even he was unable to solve QPR's problems. Following a goalless draw, with relegation rivals Reading on 28 April 2013 both teams were relegated to the championship. Speaking to the media just one week after Rangers' relegation back to the championship, Fernandez said he had been exploited since he took over at Loftus Road. After investing an estimated £50 million into the club, he said, I don't think I will be exploited anymore. I think I allowed myself to be exploited. But that's my choice. Agents are trying to get the best contracts. And there are no two ways about it I had to pay premiums. I've seen all of the parts that make football quite maybe immoral is a strong word. But they would sell their grandmother to do something. It's all part of the football ecosystem. Personal life On 14 October 2017 Fernandez married a South Korean actress Chloe at Hotel Capistel in on the French Riviera after having dating her for more than two years. Fernandez was previously married to Deborah Lee Bergstrom on 1 June 1994. They had a daughter, Stephanie, and an unnamed son according to The Independent. Stephanie graduated at Durham University on 26 June 2015 while her brother is still studying in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Brought to you by Wikivd.com would you like to know more?